educational purposes only. Um, and if you are on the phone line and you wish to ask a question, press star 8. I'll put you in the question queue and we can get to that uh, in the order we receive those. Uh, Frank, we have quite a few on the chat, questions from the chat, so let's start there for right now. Okay. Um, first question was, uh, when are the notices uh, to the popes and the acknowledging going to be posted on Utopia for all to see? Yes, they, they need to be, and uh, I apologize because I've been single minor on the cognitive law that those have not been logged, logged up. Uh, part of the, the changes that are happening in, in moving some of the sections on the home page of uh, One Heaven to the legal sites means that the historical notices will be available. So I would say to you that, that certainly by the next call, I, I would expect to see that there are obvious links both on U University of Eucadia as well as on the home page of One Heaven to see those notices. Okay? All right. Thank you, Frank. All right. Next, the questions from guest five. What is the ultimate purpose of life? Is this physical a continuous forever thing? And if not, what is the nature of the higher life after death? So it's kind of a three-part question there. Did you get all that? <laughs> no, it's a good, good question. What is the ultimate purpose of life? Well, the ultimate purpose of life, and I'm going to answer that, but I, I for for, uh, for drama, uh, I need to to uh, answer it by doing some some backhoeing. I mean, the ultimate meaning of life is another way of saying the ultimate meaning of all. The the answer to all questions. I mean that that if you look at philosophy, that is. A variation of the theme. Hello. Great. Can you hear us? Yeah. The, the short yes, of, there you are. Sorry about that. That's so right. It sounded the, like you needed to drop off. We lost you completely there for a few minutes. So. That's right. The, the short answer is awareness loves life is the answer to that question. A-L-L. -L. The meaning of all is awareness loves life. And the the flip side of that is that from our perspective, the meaning is life loves awareness. So A-L-L-L-L-A. -L 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 and the reason that is the answer to that question on life is that it is the question of the meaning of existence. It is the order of creation. It's the reasoning of being. It's the mind of the creator. It's a perspective of the mind of the creator. Uh, and it gives reason to everything you see. Life is a dream, dream has rules, but existence depends on the dream and the dreamer. And why does the and what is the unity in all this? The unity in all this is love. So please go and have a look at the journey of UCA. Go and have a look at the journey of me on Ucadia.com. Go and read Natural Law and you'll see that what I've just said to you is being far from flippant, that is a very, very, very deep answer but it requires you to read to understand the significance of what I've just said to you. Okay? Okay, Frank. So uh, the rest of that question on it, 
if it's not a continuous thing forever in the physical, what is the nature of the higher life after death? Well, you, you, you have to, to you, yeah. The, 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 two, the two additional parts of that question um, are not relevant until you understand the first part of awareness loves life. Until you see that existence is an, active, is an act, uh, a deliberate act, it's a constant act, it's one that takes place every unit of time in the universe. Uh, it is one, put it this way, uh, let, me, let, me, let me give you another analogy. We, we often see ourselves as insignificant in the bigger picture. And sometimes our ego, we feel uh, we are accused in, in ego of believing we are more important than we are. So it's easy for us to think, well, you know, in reality, what can I do? What can one man do? The system's too big, they're too entrenched, they've got too much power, they've got too much money, what can I do? Well, what we're taught in the deeper meaning of the meaning of all, when you actually read, and it's, you've got to go read these things. You Go and read Natural Law. Go and read the patents of Eucadia. Go and see these journeys. It's all there. It's been there for years. When you go and read it, you see that if one point of UCA so you're made up of trillions and trillions and trillions of, of atoms. And atoms are made up of subatomic particles and they're made up of super subatomic particles and then they're made up of unita. And units are made up of points of UCA in a position. If one point of UCA ceased to exist, the entire universe would cease to exist because reference would fail. If reference failed, if relativity failed, then existence would fail. That's how delicate the universe is. The smallest defines how the largest exists, and the existence of the largest validates the smallest. That's the mystery. Awareness loves life. Life loves awareness. So as insignificant as you think, if you did not exist, the universe would not exist. That's how important you are. So when, when we feel that our ego is running rampant, <laughs> our, ego, our ego is thinking far too small. You are the reason the universe exists. You are the reason the universe continues to exist. That's how important you are. All right. So I'm not going to answer any more to that question until they go and read what's there. But I'm happy to follow up when they come back and ask questions later. Okay? Okay, very good. Um, well, I'm not sure if you want to dig into this next question. I think these are some pretty, you know, philosophical, maybe your opinion and, and possibly what's already there at UCA, like, like you've already told us. Uh, the next question was, why did UCA create a flesh and bone, intestine and heart? Why not something else, uh, like silicon space, to accomplish its divine end? Well, again, this question, you know, the brilliance of the universe can only be revealed when you take the time and the respect to go and read it. When you well, take the journey... Well, something silicon-based, Frank, something silicon-based or um, made out of something that would not be living, so to speak, could not give... Uh, well, well, uh, this is a yeah. The question, the, okay, everything in the universe, technically, because it possesses awareness, is alive. But uh -huh. what I'm getting at is this: the beauty of the design, the incredible precision of the design of existence and the universe from the very, very beginning, can only be revealed if you take the time to one, read the journey of UCA, two go and look at the Eucadian patents and three, read the canons of law. Because until you actually see the physical diagrams of what things are and how they come together and the incredible beauty and intelligence, then you, you don't realize really what you're asking. To say a question, why was it carbon and not silicon, really goes to the heart of, well, you, 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 the only way to answer that question is to go and see the hand of 
the creator at every single level of matter. You might think that something designed like a, a cyborg, for example, because we've been image trained by Hollywood, has some superior qualities than designing something that equates to a pudding, which is our bodies. But what we don't realize is that for our weaknesses, there are untold strengths. For example, our bodies have the worst repairing of any skin of any mammal. Our bodies in, soft, in, in being largely hairless and being so soft make us a absolute target for viruses. But what that being a target for viruses allow us to do is we have the largest maximum potential because of retrovirus for mutation, that is evolution. We have evolved faster than any other species because of our inherent design. Whereas something designed like a crocodile may appear on the surface to be a far superior body than something that can be crushed by the simplest of things. Yet our body has allowed us to evolve much faster than the crocodile ever did. So I can't show that wisdom to you unless you're prepared to go on the journey. That's the answer to that question for me at this point. Absolutely. Thank you for that, Frank. Appreciate that. Let's go to the phones. We've got Ron, I believe. Let's see. Ron's on the line here. Hello, Ron. I can see he's... Um, hey. Is it working? Yep. Working. There you go. Oh, it works now. Great. <laughs> How are you doing, Frank? I'm going well, Ron. How are you? Good, good. Hey, um, I got a couple of things. I want to kind of talk a little bit about the, the 709 process, and then I want to give an overview on the court defense package that I posted, I think it was last week, um, if that's okay. Yeah, yeah, go for it, please. People want to know. They've asked me for you to talk about it. Um, now, on the on the 709, you, you, people, you got to realize that um, I am a a high profile target with the feds, and <clears throat> I can't give legal advice, and I cannot give tax advice either on the phone or in an email. I would love to, if I can help, I would do it. But I'm already in pretty deep trouble. So if you if you ask a question about a, a process or you have you want me to define something that I wrote, I'd be glad to do it, but I can't I can't outline a, a tax strategy for you. That's a big no no. So that's just that's a caveat on, on the seven oh nine. I hope everybody observes that. Um Let's see, what else? Oh, um, <clears throat> some questions that did come up. And um, basically, they're, they're digging into their, their BMF and IMF file and the file numbers, and they're getting them all decoded. Um, I, I did that a long time ago, and it, it meant nothing because you cannot get them undone. There is only one way to correct everything and that is to to basically say hey you committed fraud or you committed a mistake and I'm going to file it the right way and that's what you do on a 709 forget what they did in the background it doesn't matter you can't change it so enough said on the 709 okay now I posted at the U of U under downloads under law a, a package called court defense package now <clears throat> what this does is you you put this in immediately if you received a, a hearings or a hearing notice or a summons or something along that nature you want to challenge basically everything up front so that in the end the allocution will work much better because the judge already knows where you're going. Mm. So <clears throat> it was our talk last week, Frank, that 
we decided that, hey, they control the middle. We can't do anything about it. It's their process. Absolutely. 